I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're going to organize all this sandpaper into one place. One of the things I go through the most in the shop is sandpaper, and I have a bunch of different types. A while back I made this little container with some separators for the discs, and this keeps them in different grits so I can find what I need. But I also have a lot of sanding blocks, and I have it on rolls, and I have it in sheets. And each one of these different types has a bunch of different grits. So today I want to make one container to hold all the different types and separate them by the different grits. Let's do it. We modeled up this project so that I have a cut list and I'm just going to knock down some quarter inch MDF into these sizes. I'm going to use MDF because it's relatively lightweight, it's straight and flat, we don't have to worry about it bowing, and then we can end up painting it so it doesn't look like MDF in the end. I've got all those panels cut down and I'm going to cut some dados so that they can fit together. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is the back panel and this is the bottom. And since this is thin material, I don't really want to rely just on butt joints and glue. So I want to cut some dados into this back panel and into the bottom panel so that when these pieces sit in, they're sitting down inside something and inside something like this. We'll still use glue and brad nails to hold it together, but having all that surface contact of a dado and a piece setting in it will definitely help it be stronger. Every time I use a dado stack, people remind me that you can't have a dado in Europe and different parts of the world. In that case, you can use a router to get the exact same effect. Anytime you're doing dados, you definitely want to test them on some scrap first because just a little bit off will make it really loose and kind of not effective. It needs to be a little bit bigger. Dado stacks usually come with some shims and different spacers that you can drop on. And they're very small, so they can make small changes to your cut. The last cuts I got to do on these pieces are a rabbit on the outside edge. Obviously, I can't do that up against the fence, but I also can't use the crosscut sled because of the dado stack. So I'm going to use a miter sled here to try to push it through and just make sure that the edge of the material is right up against the edge of the blade. So hopefully that rabbit will be right on the edge of the piece. Doing a test fit of these shelves and they work pretty well, but getting your finger in here to pull out the sandpaper is going to be kind of tough. So I'm going to take them all out, batch them together with some tape and then cut out a groove so you can easily grab things. The shelves are in place now and I'm going to cover up the side panel, but I wanted to explain what these sections are for. We're going to put those discs up here in the top with the dividers so you can find the different grits. Then these pieces are for sheets. You can fit the small sheets in here, but obviously the long sheets, the big sheets, are too deep to go in there. We're going to handle that in a little bit with a cutter. On the sides we have these troughs for sanding blocks to fall down in. There'll be an opening at the bottom so you can just pull one out. So this piece will end up covering here, but before we glue this on, we got to cut a little finger hole in the bottom so you can easily pull the block out.
I got this front piece in here. It's laying on the front of this shelf, but it's just on the face or the side face of this piece. So to reinforce it a little bit, I've cut some small pieces and I'm gonna use some CA glue on two sides and then just fit it into the corner. That'll just help it stay in place. I made these a little bit too long because the front face covers up the shelf, but I can trim these off with a flush cut saw. The construction is done here, but there's one last little feature that we wanna add. We developed a little slider that we can put on the front of this using these two aluminum rods, and this slider holds a small blade. That's so that you can take one of these full sheets, slide it up underneath here, and then go and cut it off to smaller pieces that fit into these areas below. So we have 3D printed some pieces to hold a blade, and the blade we're gonna use is actually from one of these little rotary cutters. It's a very small blade, and it definitely will dull pretty quickly when you're cutting sandpaper with it, but I think this is a pretty inexpensive way to add a cutting head that you can easily swap out the blade. Let's put this thing together. I've got one of these rotary blades and it fits right into this piece right there. And then there's a top section that goes into it. It has a little post to go through the center of the blade. And then once those pieces are together, we just drive in a screw on the back side. Now we're gonna have plans available for this whole thing and the files for this 3D printed part will definitely be included with those plans. There is a slot in this to drop in a nut that would be a captive nut, but luckily it's tight enough that you can just kind of put the screw in and it holds the whole thing together. These aluminum rods are fit pretty tightly into these things. And then the blade carriage fits on top and slides down and this acts as a handle so you can slide it back and forth. Then we just put on the other end. And now we have our slider. And this is gonna be mounted right here. I wanna mark where that's gonna go and then we're gonna put some cutting mat underneath it so that the blade's not always going into the MDF. A while back we made a 3D printer enclosure and we covered the whole top surface with a cutting mat. This is an off cut from that project. And so I'm gonna use this to cut down a piece that will fit in between these two outside pieces. You can buy these in all different sizes so you can get one to fit your project specifically. I'm gonna use some spray adhesive here and let it dry just a little bit and then slide it into this area before I screw this in back down. All right, so we got this on there. Let's give it a test. Take a sheet, slide it down. Probably wanna do it on the back side since the, that'll help the blade. Hold it in place and there you go. Works pretty well. Figuring out the right amount of pressure to put down is probably really important to be able to cut all the way through. Sweet. The last little thing we did was cut out several pieces of MDF and laser on different grit numbers here. You could obviously write them on any way you wanted to. And these will help separate the discs into different grits in the top section. Now we just gotta load this whole thing up. You can hang this thing a bunch of different ways, but I'm gonna put it on my cart that I built before, and it's got a French cleat system on it. So I've made a little cleat, added a whole bunch of glue, cause that's gonna do the real work. And then I'm gonna screw it into the back of this piece.
And here it is, the final sandpaper holder, organizer, dispenser thingy. I don't know what to call it, but it fits really well on this whole cart. And we do have a whole project video about this cart in case you need something like this. It's a great way to fit a whole bunch of different tools and supplies on a big movable unit. This is about a day's worth of work with minimal materials. Obviously, if you don't need the cutter thing, you don't have to add that, and then it's just a good organizer. And of course, you can adjust this whole thing to match how your shop works. Maybe you only use a few grits of sandpaper, or maybe you have a whole bunch. You can change the number of dividers here and the number of sections here to hold whatever you use. If you learned some stuff from this video, I would love to hear about it. Please let me know down in the comments. We've got tons of other types of project videos that you may want to check out. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do that and hit the bell. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Ready. Say action, man. Action. <laughs> action, man. <laughs> All right. Action, man. The bottom so you can easily pull the block out. Action. <laughs>